の場所に黒の騎士団がコーネリア殿下聞こえているよギルフォード。Code Geese. Code Geese, Lelouch of the Rebellion. I almost said revolution, but it's a rebellion. It was a TV anime series created by the Japanese Sunrise Company, formerly Nippon Sunrise, which was formerly Sunrise Studios. You follow that? It's a bit non traditional in the sense that the, the manga was adapted later along with light novels. Essentially, it was created for, for a TV series. Goru. Taniguchi is the original creator and director. Goro has worked on anime series since the early 90s on titles such as Mobile Fighter G Gundam and has since worked on Gun, X Sword, Planates, and S Cried. You know, the S dot Cry dot Ed, their little funky thing, to name a few of his more popular work. Another interesting note of Code Geese is the work of the all female animation team Clamp. Highly acclaimed and around since the late 80s. Code Geese takes place in a modern day 2010 Japan, except in their work, Japan has been taken over by the Holy Empire of Britannia, one of the three superpowers controlling the current world the Chinese Federation and the European Union, and the other two. On a side note, you know, I've assumed, I suppose, the dumb American in me, in here, Jab, that. Britannia generally was a referral to Great Britain, you know, the UK, the old Brits that we kicked out, hence make it a better country without a king or a queen, but I digress. Apparently, perhaps because of the Holy Empire part in Code Geese, they must be linking the US as the superpower. Can Jab still continue this review, you ask? But of course. Does it lose any points? But of course. No, just kidding. So, to Code Geese. In the world there, with the Holy Empire of Britannia, the dominant and captured military of Japan, the Japanese become essentially Area 11, and their residents just referred to as 11s. I guess it could be worse, but, anyways. Lelouch Lepronge is an exiled prince from Britannia, attended Ashford Academy in Japan as an elite simply because he's not an 11. However, essentially the rest of his past is kept secret to his peers. After an odd encounter with an even stranger girl, Cece, he has bestowed geese, or power of kings, in the exchange for a contract with her after she saves his life. From there, Lelouch begins a rebellion under a second life character he named Zero, an attempt to give Japan a chance at taking at least a small part of their country and culture back. Lelouch is smart, portrayed to be an extreme intellect, and his strategy in life, games, and battle reflects that. He'd be a worthy adversary of Light or L from Death Note, perhaps a yin to each of their yangs. He nearly plays both at times, forcing himself into situations requiring evil actions to continue the part as a force of good. Think Batman? No, don't think Batman. This is different. Lelouch thinks and acts exceptionally quick in difficult situations and generally keeps himself a step or two ahead. Sometimes, surprisingly, thinking ahead of an outcome, think a master magician meets a four star general in battle. Is it sometimes too thought out? And too perfect, as in not believable, that no one could be that smart and or lucky? To that, I would say, well, I'm not smart enough to say. Is it possible to be that intelligent? Unless you were, say, the smartest person in the world, it isn't hard to believe someone could exist on that level. It's exciting to believe in an entity, real or fiction, more intelligent than Jab. Picture that. I know. It's not easy. Code Geese progresses at a near torrid pace, so pay attention, and it's not the sort of anime to watch deep into the night when you might not off. Oh, that's just me because I'm getting old. Right. Even with the quick pace and the main characters 
the developed well enough to relate and attach to for sure. The divide between good and evil, right from wrong, fair and unfair, tugs at the heart of many of the characters. Do you root for Lelouch like you can't help but root for Vegeta? For sure. Do you root for Suzaku Kurarugi, Lelouch's childhood best friend, who's now a major part of the Britannia military? Perhaps. Does Lelouch start to lose his way as his actions get darker? You'll have to watch to find out. But is it good? Well, I can tell you what it does well. Code Geass revisits a character's evilness, if you will. What I mean is some characters are introduced by their actions, which are undoubtedly evil, and someone to easily hate. However, sometimes the reason or purpose behind their choices are revealed, and things aren't quite as black and white. It adds depth and realism. Code Geass also does a great job of keeping the viewer guessing, and has a fair share of cliffhanger moments to keep you hooked as well. Of course, you can have all the build-ups and cliffhangers in the world, but if you have no interest in the outcome or the characters, it still isn't a good show. Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion, is good anime, though. It kept me hooked and wanted more enough not to deviate to other anime, which is hard to stop, while I was into the series. It's hardly ever boring, and there isn't any unbearable fan service for you jab fans out there. So, without further ado, let's get to the R score. For plot, Jab gives an 8.0. For characters, 7.8. The music animation, 7.9. Fan service, 8.3. And crank it through the R's. Code Geese gets a 79. Pretty good on our tough rating system. Code Geese, worth a watch. And keep an eye out for our spoiler review, where we dive into some of the crazy moments of this one. Don't forget to subscribe to Jab for more honest anime reviews.